Good morning and welcome back to the International Space Station Flight Control Room. I'm NASA Shaniqua Vereen and you are watching live mission coverage for the NASA SpaceX Crew 4 mission. Today we are returning for astronauts home after a six month science mission aboard the International Space Station. Houston Station on two. With you on two, Josh. Yeah, as you probably already heard, uh, sounded like uh, uh, the, there is no fire there in the uh, Russian segment. We've got zeros on our CSA CPs here in Node 2. Uh, so if uh, you agree, I think we're stepping back into the Dragon procedures. Do you? We don't need that. Station Houston on Space Ground 2 for Josh. Go ahead on 2. Yep, uh, thank you again for that report. Uh, we're waiting on our colleagues in the Russian segment to uh, give us the CSA CP teams. CP readings there. Um, other than that, we will let you know when we are continuing. Okay, copy that. We will stand by on uh, resuming the Dragon Nuts. Good read. Again, you're watching live mission coverage of NASA SpaceX Crew 4 mission, returning four astronauts home from a six month stay aboard the International Space Station. Mission control teams here in at SpaceX Mission Control in Hawthorne, California, have delayed today's undocking time, moving it to the right about 30 minutes. We're looking at 11.05 a.m. Central Time for an undocking, the middle of a one hour undocking window to allow crew on the International Space Station to check the hatch alignment on the ISS side of the docking interface. Crews are proceeding now with vestibule depressurization and moving along towards that 11.05 a.m. Central Time undocking. Today's undocking is autonomous, but will be monitored by ground controllers here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room and in Hawthorne, California. Teams are being led here by Flight Director Adi Bulos. Station Houston on the big loop, uh, letting you know that it, uh, we did get confirmation that this was a false fire, and we are continuing on the undock procedures. Copy, thanks. Good news. Station copies, and we are in step uh, 3.1 of U.S. hatch seal inspection.
currently going to live view inside of SpaceX Dragon Freedom, attached to the space-facing port of the Harmony module. Dragon is returning to Earth later today, expected still at 3.55 p.m. Central Time, returning a crew of four along with hundreds of pounds of return cargo. We're looking for Dragon to depart the station again. That's 11.05 a.m. Central Time. Upon undocking, Dragon will have a small set of fi firings or burns to push it away from the station. Again, we're looking for a deorbit burn to come a few hours later. We're looking at a, around a 3 o'clock deorbit burn for a 3.55 p.m. Central Time splashdown off the coast of Florida, and that's Jacksonville, Florida. Houston Station on 2 for hatch seal inspection. The Node 2 Zenith hatch seal is complete and no anomalies. Houston copies. There are a couple milestones we'll see Dragon meet this morning. First, those departure burns, but then it will cross the keep out sphere, an invisible line around the station with a 200 meter radius. It will keep heading away from the station and will stand by until it makes its way out of the approach ellipsoid, another invisible line considered the neighborhood of the station. These invisible lines are where we have checkpoints for the vehicle on the way to and from the station. Once that command to undock is sent, we will be looking for two sets of six hooks from the International Space Station to be released from Dragon Freedom. After open, two small undocking burns that will last less than two seconds and we will begin to see separation of the vehicle. The spacecraft will start to slowly drift away. Next, Dragon will have a few departure burns to get it into the proper position away from station for its eventual deorbit burn scheduled later today at 3.01 p.m. Central Time. That will slow Dragon down enough to drop it out of orbit and send it towards its landing zone, splashing down at approximately 3.55 p.m. Central Time, 4.55 p.m. Eastern. Houston Station on 2, those uh, PMA 3 closeout photos are on SSC 17. Copy.
If you're just joining us, the Crew Dragon Freedom, along with Crew 4, is ready to, do, to depart the space station, having arrived on April 27th. The crew consists of NASA astronauts Chell Lindgren, Bob Hines, Jessica Watkins, and ESA astronaut Samantha Christopher Reddy. Freedom, SpaceX on the big loop for timeline impacts and return to Earth plan. Freedom, SpaceX on the big loop for timeline impacts and return to Earth plan. On the big loop. HL, we've got some time to talk here, so I want to walk through the plan for the next few hours and give you a chance to ask any questions you might have. First, we expect about 20 minutes remaining here on the vestibule leak check, complete around 1550. After that, we have some final vehicle reconfigurations prior to undock and are targeting 1600 for undock sequence start. How copy? It's 1600 for undock sequence start. Good copy. Uh, some more words. After we undock, we are targeting Jacksonville as primary with Tallahassee as an alternate 24 hours later. And to get down to Jacksonville, we've got depart burns one, two, and three, one prop waste burn, and then the deorbit burn. Expect all the events on your timeline through depart burn three to shift 30 minutes, but the prop waste burn and deorbit burn timing is accurate. How copy? We copy all. Continuing. Latest forecast in Jacksonville shows winds averaging below seven knots, shallow waves, no rain, great weather to land. Our recovery vessel, Megan, is on site, not tracking any issues. They're ready to get you out of the water. And I just got word from Rick on the boat. He said, see you soon. The uh, good looking weather, Megan is on station and uh, has no issues. And we are uh, looking forward to seeing where this is. And a few more words on timeline after we undock. It's a bit of an expedited timeline to splash down. You're out of suits for less than two hours. I'm going to leave it up to y'all to manage suit stowage as appropriate. Uh, we're going to plan a PMC after depart burn two and I'll leave it up to you to take it or waive it at that time. How copy so far? Copy, it's uh, going to have shorter time out of suits. Uh, we'll manage uh, the suit storage and uh, schedule PNC after the part uh, during two. Good copy. Continuing manual control of cabin temperature is not going to work through 4.080 as we start to cool the vehicle prior to deorbit. And as a final note, I'm going to have you step into 4.700 now to get a head start on cabin configuration for the deorbit sequence. I've got two notes on that procedure. The first is that pre-chill is not necessary in section one. Essentially skip that section. Second note, floater cam inspection not necessary in section four. Uh, so similarly to suits, we'll be looking to you to manage cargo and have the cabin configured for entry prior to suit leak checks at 18.55. How copy? Copy, we're skipping pre-chill and then uh, step up. We will not uh, be getting the floor chamber out, but we will be managing uh, sewage and cargo um, prior to 18.55. Good copy on all. and. Now a question for you. Uh, do you have any questions for the team down here in Hawthorne? I would like to know what the froyo of the day is.
And Freedom, we've got vanilla and orange guava sorbet here. I don't expect you'll make it here this week, but uh, we'll see you soon here in Hawthorne. Great, uh, sure, appreciate it. We don't have any other questions. We're looking forward to uh, um, seeing folks on, uh, on the meeting. Copy all, Freedom. We're looking forward to seeing you as well, and I'll be back with you shortly on vestibule leak check status. And with that, uh, Houston Station on two, we've got the Node 2 overhead hatch and MPEV closed, and you've already got the SSC 17 for those down lake photos. Copy. And you just heard a message from Jake Vindel, the core in SpaceX Mission Control, the crew operations resource engineer, reporting to uh, Dragon Commander Chell Lindgren that they do have a 30-minute delay into that in today's undocking time. Again, we're moving that to the right to 11.05 a.m. Central Time, the middle of a one-hour undocking window, and this allowed the crew on the ISS time to check the hatch alignment on the ISS side of the docking interface. Crews are currently in a vestibule leak check, and we're waiting to see that that moves forward nominally. NASA and SpaceX are still targeting a 3.55 p.m. Central Time, 4.55 p.m. Eastern Time splashdown off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida. Wrapping up nearly six-month science mission for NASA astronauts Joe Lingren, Bob Hines, Jessica Watkins, and ESA astronaut Samantha Christopher Reddy. Station scuba on Space Ground 2 for Koichi. When you have a chance, give us a call on Space Ground 3. Taking another live look at the SpaceX Dragon Freedom attached to the space-facing port of the Harmony module. Dragon is returning to Earth later today, expected at 3.55 p.m. Central Time, 4.55 p.m. Eastern Time, with about 500 pounds of research and return cargo, along with the crew for crew members. 
About four hours after the Dragon departs from the station, it will conduct a deorbit burn, which will last about 16 minutes and 40 seconds. It'll then take about 30 minutes for Dragon to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere for its parachute-assisted splashdown off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida. Again. We're expecting that splashdown at 3.55 p.m. Central Time, 4.55 p.m. Eastern. There are a couple milestones we'll see Dragon meet this morning. First, those the departure burns, but then it will get, it will cross the keep-out sphere and a visible line around the station with a 200-meter radius. It will keep heading away from the station and will stand by until it makes its way out of the approach ellipsoid, another invisible line considered the neighborhood of the station. These invisible lines are where we have checkpoints for the, ve the vehicle on the way to and from the station. Once that command to undock is sent, we will be looking for two sets of six hooks from the International Space Station to be released from Dragon Freedom. After open, two small undocking burns, that will last less than two seconds. And we'll see separation of the vehicle from the International Space Station. The spacecraft will start to slowly drift away. Next, we'll have a, free, a few departure burns to get it into the proper position away from the station for its eventual deorbit. And we're looking for deorbit burn to be around 3.01 p.m. Central Time. That will slow Dragon down enough to drop it out of orbit and send it toward the landing zone, splashing down at approximately 3.55 p.m. Central Time, 4.55 p.m. Eastern Time, off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida. the Munich uh, on space ground two for the timeline. Houston's here on two. Okay, I'm gonna go to uh, space ground three for the timeline discussion. If you're just joining us, you're looking live inside of Dragon Freedom, where the crew four astronauts are preparing for undocking today, returning after a six month science mission aboard the International Space Station. NASA and SpaceX are targeting an 11.05 a.m. Central Time undocking from the International Space Station. With a splashdown time of 3.55 p.m. Eastern Time, Central Time, 4.55 p.m. Eastern Time, off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida.
will be providing continuous coverage through splashdown and crew egress later today. In just a few minutes, our colleagues at Mission Control X or SpaceX Mission Control in Hawthorne, California will be joining the broadcast and giving us some updates on what's been happening there. Dragon and the International Space Station are currently flying 259 statute miles above the Pacific Ocean off the coast of the United States. Again, we should see and hear from our colleagues joining the broadcast from MCCX, SpaceX's Mission Control in Hawthorne, California, just here shortly. You're looking at a live view of the Dragon Freedom spacecraft as we await its departure from the International Space Station on its way back to planet Earth. It's Friday, October 14th here at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Now we expect Dragon to push away from the space station at 9.05 a.m. Pacific or 16.05 GMT. And that will be with our crew four astronauts, including Chell Lindgren, Bob Hines, Jessica Watkins, and European Space Agency astronaut Samantha Caristoforetti. The crew is currently suited up and inside Dragon, uh, and the station hatches are all sealed in preparation for departure. Thanks for tuning in to watch live coverage of Crew Dragon completing its fourth official long duration mission for NASA's commercial crew program. My name is Kate Tice and I'm the quality systems engineering manager here at SpaceX. Joining me today from NASA Communications is Sandra Jones. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Kate. It's great to be here. So once Dragon departs station, the crew's flight home is expected to last around five hours. Upon separation from station, Dragon will use its Draco engines to thrust away from the station in a series of carefully choreographed maneuvers, or four departure burns, to increase the distance between the spacecraft and the space station. Dragon will also execute a phasing burn to lower its orbit and line the spacecraft up with its landing location. Next on its trip home is deorbit, entry, and landing, which covers all operations after the final departure maneuver. That includes trucks, excuse me, trunk separation, closure of the nose cone, a deorbit burn, deployment of the drogue and main parachutes, and finally splashdown, uh, which will be off the Florida coast, at which point our teams will recover Chell, Bob, Jessica, and Samantha. Later today, Dragon is targeted to splash down off the coast of Florida at 1.55 p.m. Pacific, uh, and that's today, October 13th, uh, or 4.55 p.m. Eastern time, and followed by the crew getting picked up at sea uh, by one of the SpaceX recovery vessels. That's right, Kate. And today on board the International Space Station is the Expedition 68 crew. They're currently being led by Roscosmos cosmonaut Sergei Prokopiev, who just took over as station commander from Samantha Kristoff Reddy, who is coming home today on Crew 4. And as a reminder, just like its approach to the International Space Station, Dragon's departure and deorbit is designed to be fully autonomous, requiring no action from the crew on board.
NASA astronaut Nicole Mann helped the crew members prepare for departure earlier today and will be watching from the cupola. But the prime departure monitoring role falls on Chell Lindgren and Bob Hines from Inside Dragon. Mission controls in Houston and Hawthorne will back them up. So let's head over to Shaniqua Vereen at the Johnson Space Center to talk a bit about how the station crew have been preparing to send the crew home and what we can expect from here until Dragon departs from station. Shaniqua? Thanks, Sandra, and welcome back to the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. The flight control team is primed and ready for this morning's undocking operations. Today's Orbit 2 team is being led by NASA Flight Director Adi Bulos. Since Crew 5's arrival just last week, it's been a busy week during our direct handover. Over the last several days, the astronauts worked to pack Dragon full of cargo for their return journey home. Along with the crew, Dragon will return hundreds of pounds of cargo back to Earth. The cargo inside includes some samples from continuing human research and some hardware and other items. All of the cargo will be offloaded after we get the crew out following splashdown, and the scientific samples will then be sent to researchers for final analysis. The crew also took time to get their SpaceX suits unpacked and ready for their journey home. Since getting the hatches closed around 9.20 a.m. Central Time, all four astronauts are now suited up and in their seats and standing by for undocking. We'll continue to through to a final go-no-go -go poll coming up in just a few minutes where the joint SpaceX and NASA teams make their final call for Dragon 2 depart station. This is one of many checkpoints in the return that will continue all the way until just before the deorbit burn, giving mission managers multiple chances to assess the weather at the splashdown zones and making sure everything is lining up before Dragon departs. So we'll stand by for the final go-no-go, -go, but for now, everything's continuing to look good here and on time departure of 11.05 a.m. Central Time. With that, I'll throw it back over to you guys. Over to you, Kate and Sandra. Thanks, Shaniqua. All good news to hear. Now, separation is set for approximately 9.05 a.m. Pacific or 16.05 GMT, GMT, which is just a couple minutes from now. At the moment, Dragon, which you see there on your screen, is in its final configuration before undocking, and we are waiting for mission operators to conduct their go-no-go -go poll on whether to move forward with the undocking procedure. And just like during its approach to the International Space Station, Dragon's departure and deorbit is designed to be fully autonomous, requiring no action from the crew on board, which is even easier this time around since the crew won't have to stop at any waypoints like when we see a vehicle arrive. Now, once the undocking sequence is complete, Dragon will use its Draco engines to thrust away from the station in a series of carefully choreographed maneuvers, or four departure. Station Houston on space to ground two for exercise. All right, see ya. Go for exercise on two. Yeah, until uh, we complete undock, um, A-RED, we have a no, or sorry, constraint on A-RED exercise. So, so can you let Sergey know he has no go on A-RED and actually it's all exercise? I'll give you no exercise until undock complete. Thank you. Now, once the undocking sequence is complete, Dragon will use its Draco engines, which you see a couple of those thrust reports there uh, on your screen. It'll use those Draco engines to thrust away from the station in a series of carefully choreographed maneuvers or four departure burns to increase the distance between the spacecraft and the space station. From there, a phasing burn will place Dragon on a trajectory back to Earth. And next on its trip is... Freedom, SpaceX on the big loop. Vestibule leak check nominal, and we're going to step into residual depress imminently.
and continuing to step through those procedures ahead of undocking today, hearing everything continues to move smoothly. So next on its trip home, following um, what Kate just discussed is the orbit, entry and landing, which covers all operations after the final departure maneuver. So that includes trunk separation, closure of the nose cone, a deorbit burn, deployment of the drogue and main parachutes, and finally splash down off the Florida coast, at which point our teams will recover the crew for astronauts inside Crew Dragon from the water. It's always super exciting to follow along. Uh, now we are expecting that go no-go poll to occur in about two minutes or so. Um, again, that is basically the last poll uh, for the mission operators to basically make sure that everything, both on board Dragon and on board station, uh, to everybody to confirm between here in Mission Control and Hawthorne, as well as Mission Control over at NASA and at Johnson Space Center, uh, basically for all teams to make sure that everybody is thumbs up for undocking from the International Space Station. And yeah, there's a first live look actually inside the capsule uh, with our crew four astronauts there. As you can see, they're all buckled in, their suits are on, and uh, they, everyone looks pretty comfy to me. Yep, absolutely. And the crew will remain in these suits during the dynamic phase of the mission. So once they are undocked successfully and a little bit away from the space station, they will be able to take those suits off. Um, but we are targeting a pretty short phasing from undocking to splash zone. So uh, we heard a call earlier that they're only going to be out of their suits for about two hours or so, and then they'll put them back on, get suited, and get ready for re-entry and splash down. Yeah, now while they have their suits on, um, they are, and as in, the, in, in their seats, as we see here, um, they are plugged in uh, to the umbilical, which is basically the connection point between the suit and the seat, uh, and therefore the spacecraft as a whole. So as they're sitting here, um, they're able to be connected like with electronics, avionics, so those communication systems that uh, we will hear as they speak back and forth to core um, here at SpaceX Mission Control, but also they have fresh air being flowed through the suit. So I don't have to worry about them really being uncomfortable because they have cool nitrox or nitrogen oxygen mixture being pumped through the suit to help, um, you know, regulate their body temperature and keep them comfy. And speaking of umbilicals, uh, there are some other umbilicals that are going to come into play here in just a few minutes um, when we do have the undocking sequence that begins. Um, there's umbilicals that will retract, and those are providing the power right now for Dragon. Um, once it does depart from the space station, uh, Dragon will receive power from the solar cells on Dragon, uh, which you may have seen when we had the view of Dragon, which is, of course, currently docked, um, but won't be for very long. We have the go-no-go no poll coming up in just a couple of minutes from now. Um, and if all goes well, then we'll undock just a short time from now also. I would imagine at this point in time, you know, this crew has been on station for months, right? They, I bet they're excited to come home and see their families. But I would also imagine that this moment might be a little bittersweet, Sandra. Like their, their home away from home is uh, on station and uh, here they are buckled in and, you know, only hours away from, from splashing down at this point. So I could imagine that uh, there is excitement, but also a little bit of sadness that their journey in space is, is coming to end, at least for now. Yeah, I'm sure they've been on station for 170 days, actually, which is uh, just, just shy of six months. They arrived on April 27th. Um, so the crew has actually completed over 2,720 orbits of Earth during wow. their time on station um, and has traveled over 72 million miles cumulative, which is um, pretty crazy to think <laughs> about. But I'm sure you're right. I bet there is some bittersweetness mm -hmm. to it. Excited to see your family, but sad to be living this, leaving this environment. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop. Final reconfigurations for undock are complete and nominal. Houston and Hawthorne teams have pulled go for undock sequence start at 1600 and separation at 1605. Confirm visors down and crew are ready for undock and departure. And uh, SpaceX Freedom copies pull the go for undock. Our visors are all secured close. We are ready
So we did just hear the confirmation that Dragon has the go to undock. So we are now waiting for that undocking sequence to begin. Um, it should start in just about two minutes from now. And once that sequence does begin, it will take less than five minutes for Dragon to separate from the International Space Station. It's home for nearly six months. Now, the first step in that automatic undocking sequence is for the umbilicals to retract, as Sandra mentioned earlier. Uh, these umbilicals connect Dragon systems to the space station, which transfer power, telemetry, and commands between the two vehicles throughout Dragon's stay. And once that's complete, Dragon will unlatch itself from the space station by releasing 12 hard capture hooks uh, in two separate phases. All of that combined will take roughly four and a half minutes, and then Dragon will be ready to depart from station and begin to move itself further and further away uh, using its Draco thrusters. And Dragon's initial departure from station is a little different than other docked vehicles like the Soyuz that rely on springs to push them away from the docking port. Dragon will execute two short thruster firings to undock using a combination of the 12 Draco engines around the base of the capsule. With the first breaking any stiction between Dragon and the docking port and the second slowly backing the spacecraft away. So we're expecting the call for the undocking sequence to begin in just moments Freedom. from now. SpaceX on the big loop, undock sequence commanded. And there you heard it. Perfect timing, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> So live view there of the Dragon capsule. Uh, as we were talking a little bit before, those are the solar panels uh, that you see there on the trunk portion of Dragon. We will, of course, be separating. Freedom to SpaceX, umbilical demate, complete and nominal. Good news there. It sounds like we got confirmation that those umbilicals that we were just talking about uh, that help connect the station to Dragon while it's on board uh, have nominally disconnected. And so as we said, it will be less than five minutes from the point that sequence was sent, which was at 9 a.m. Um, so about four minutes from now, we should be able to see um, some of the first movement as Dragon slowly backs away from the space station. So as I was mentioning before, the black portion that's there, uh, that is the trunk. We will be separating uh, that uh, from the Dragon capsule. The small silver line that you see at the bottom part of the Dragon capsule itself, that's the heat shield, which of course is necessary to reveal uh, in order for them to make atmospheric reentry. Uh, so we will be, after Dragon moves away from station, we will be separating. Uh, but I love this view that we have because it's such a gorgeous view of those solar panels, uh, which we make here in house, um, as well as the trunk itself. Uh, so I love that we're able to, to see that configuration basically in its last time before it, it uh, deorbits and eventually, you know, <laughs> burns up in the atmosphere. <laughs> So with Dragon now getting ready to undock, let's check in with Shaniqua Vereen in Mission Control at the Johnson Space Center. Thanks, Sandra. And uh, we do have that confirmation of umbilical has retracted and the command for undock has been sent. Next up, we'll be looking for umbilical retraction and look for two sets of six hooks to open. That will take just a couple of minutes. And we have a first set of those hooks open. And the second set are moving. The six, six, six hooks open and we're working on the next six, a total of 12 hooks in all that will be open today.
Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop, all hooks open. And Dragon separation confirmed. All 12 hooks now open. Hooks all open and release confirmed at 11.05 a.m. Central Time while Dragon and the International Space Station flew 259 statute miles above the North Atlantic Ocean. And those were words from the crew on the ISS to the crew inside Dragon Freedom, giving them farewells as they head on their journey to back to home on Earth. And Freedom SpaceX on the big loop depart burn zero was nominal. Four astronauts' time aboard the orbital outpost is complete following a six-month science and research mission. Undocking occurred at 11.05 a.m. Central Time, 12.05 p.m. Eastern Time, while the International Space Station was flying over the North Atlantic Ocean. Next up will be a series of departure burns to push Dragon further from the space station. To take us through those burns, I will turn it back over to Hawthorne. Kate, Sandra? Thanks, Shaniqua. I just want to point out that awesome view that we have that we had moments ago. There it is. That is a view from Dragon as it leaves the International Space Station. So it's incredible that it was just there moments ago <laughs> and it's moving already uh, as we can see further and further away. And they were docked to the node to Zenith port or space facing port. Um, and you did see a little bit of uh, those thruster firings take place already. Uh, that was for burn zero, which we did hear was nominal. Um, lasted just a couple of seconds long, but that little bit was enough to push it away from the space station. And we are now awaiting departure burn one. So there's a live view inside Dragon Freedom. On the right-hand side would be Pilot Bob Hines, and on the left-hand side would be Commander Chell Lindgren. And they'll continue to monitor on the screens inside of Crew Dragon Freedom as they continue the journey back home. But we are hearing that everything is proceeding as expected. Um, we are targeting that departure burn one about two minutes from now. Departure burn one will increase that initial opening rate to between Crew Dragon and the space station. At this point in time, we are utilizing the Draco thrusters, uh, which are on board Dragon. Um, this departure burn, we're expecting it to last about 21 seconds. At this point, Dragon is steering itself. Uh, the approach and undocking, um, you know, basically getting to station and leaving it, are everything is autonomous. However, the crew is able to uh, take over at any point in time if necessary. But as you can see right there, um, they're able to follow along with everything happening with the capsule and their progress uh, for their departure um, there on those screens that we saw moments ago. Yeah, exactly right. And during docking, when we have a vehicle that's approaching space station, it can take a little bit longer because we have these hold points that we wait at um, for safety per 
purposes and precautions, but during undocking, it can happen a lot quicker, and, and you really saw that. They just undocked a few minutes ago, and now they're already backing away. Uh, we're moving into the next departure burn, um, which we should hear the call out that it has begun um, any second now. And again, you said uh, this is a pretty short burn, will only last about 20 seconds or so. So standing by for the call that um, departure burn one has begun. Again, departure burn one will last for, will last for about 20 seconds. And we are hearing that the burn is underway. So this burn is going to increase the initial opening rate between Crew Dragon and the space station. And as you mentioned, Kate, that um, this burn ut utilizes the service section Dracos. Freedom, SpaceX on the big loop, depart burn one nominal. At this time, you are go to doff suits per procedure 4.012 if desired. If you do take the suits off and stow them, we ask that you stow with visors closed. And finally, a reminder that the big loop will be deactivated following Dragon's exit from the approach ellipsoid. We Good copy. And we did hear confirmation that that departure burn one is complete and went perfectly as expected. It lasted 21 seconds and used those service section Dracos. We also heard some words um, from the ground up to the crew letting them know that they have the option to take off their spacesuits if they would like. Uh, they don't have to though, um, but if they would, care to do so, they're able to do so now at this point. Uh, Dragon is already about 175 meters away from the space station. And so the next major milestone that we're looking for is when Dragon exits the keep out sphere. That's that imaginary sphere or boundary 200 meters in radius around the space station. And it is one of several safety zones set up to govern visiting spacecraft, either arriving or departing the space station. But before moving into the keep out sphere, spacecraft have to be configured where they would not cross the imaginary boundary for at least four orbits, even if the spacecraft lost all maneuvering for some reason. Um, so the vehicle is now um, about 207 meters away. So it And Freedom SpaceX on the big loop to confirm cameras are external. So that was SpaceX core, which you see there also uh, moments. Sounded like some nice words uh, there from Commander Chell Lindgren. Freedom, we appreciate those kind words. Uh, we will miss you and we look forward to seeing you back home. And ISS, the Dragon has exited the keep out sphere. As you just heard there, we just got word that Dragon exited the keep out sphere. As Sandra mentioned, uh, it's an imaginary boundary um, around the station. Um, the next event that we are uh, standing by for is for Dragon to exit the approach ellipsoid. Um, I just want to mention real quick that view on screen there is SpaceX Mission Control, which is just to uh, the left of Sandra and I. Um, that's where SpaceX core or crew operations and resources engineer, uh, Jake 
Jake Vendel is standing by. That is the primary voice that you hear communicating to the crew, at least whenever they are speaking to uh, Mission Control here in Hawthorne. Um, we also, of course, have Mission Control Houston um, over at NASA's Johnson Space Center, um, and that was the voice that we heard just moments ago um, of Chell speaking to. And there's that live view of Johnson Space Center Mission Control now. So both teams are integrated and working together um, and communicating with station and with crew as we have um, their departure, uh, or excuse me, their departure now confirmed and they are now making their way further and further away from the station. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, as we are waiting for Dragon to exit the approach ellipsoid, or AE, as you hear it referred to, um, another imaginary shape that we have, uh, this time it's a three-dimensional ellipsoid, which measures four kilometers by two kilometers by two kilometers, uh, and that's in the same family as the keep-out sphere. One of the key differences with the approach ellipsoid is that uh, vehicles outside it have to be on what we call a 24-hour safe free drift trajectory. That means that the spacecraft would not cross into the approach ellipsoid for at least 24 hours again, uh, even if it lost all of its maneuvering capability. Uh, so we will be listening in for that call out once we hear confirmation uh, that Dragon is outside that approach ellipsoid or AE. And that's a live view from the station looking at Dragon Freedom. And so at this time, Crew Dragon Freedom is 378 meters away from the International Space Station. So we are standing by for confirmation that we have exited the approach ellipsoid. We are expecting that about five, six minutes from now. Um, so we are getting closer. Um, but as you mentioned, we can continue to see Dragon get smaller as in this view from the International Space Station. Again, there are four crew members inside Crew Dragon Freedom. That includes NASA astronauts Chell Lindgren, Bob Hines, and Jessica Watkins, as well as European Space Agency astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti. They have been on board the International Space Station for 170 days now after they launched from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida on April 27th. As I mentioned earlier in the webcast, at this point, I I would imagine that the astronauts are excited to come home. It has been nearly six months since they've seen their families, uh, but I would also imagine that this moment is pretty bittersweet. Uh, you know, they have done, they, they've worked really hard while on station. They've done lots and lots of science. Um, Sandra mentioned that they um, have, uh, what was the number that you had earlier? It was thousands of orbits. I can't remember quite what it was off the top of my head, but they have traveled so far during their uh, six month stay up on station and it's their home away from home at this point. So uh, I'm sure they're very much looking forward to getting back to their families here on Earth. Uh, but I'm sure that, you know, the next basically five and a half hours um, are, are bittersweet because it's their last visit uh, and there we actually, um, if you look at the Dragon capsule there, we can actually see the, the thrusting uh, in action of those Draco uh, thrusters that we were mentioning before. That's what Dragon is using to uh, maneuver away from the space station. And all of that is done autonomously, as we mentioned several times in the broadcast. Um, but just to jump back to your point on the numbers. So uh, they, again, have been on board station for 170 days. They've orbited the Earth 2,700. Freedom, SpaceX on Dragon to Ground. Com check on the cabin mic came through. How us? So that was just a quick comm check. Now that uh, the crew members are doffing or taking off their spacesuits, they no longer have that in-air uh, communication because their helmets are off. So they're going to be using the in-cabin microphone uh, to communicate with uh, ground teams. Copy all. Good to hear you on Dragon to Ground.
So we are standing by for confirmation that the crew has exited the approach ellipsoid. Um, we're expecting that to happen about five minutes from now. And again, this is a imaginary shape around the space station that is two kilometers by two kilometers by four kilometers. Um, and any spacecraft that enter into this imaginary shape have to be in a 24 hour safe free drift tra trajectory, which just means the spacecraft would not cross into that approach ellipsoid for at least 20 24 hours, even if it lost all of its maneuvering for some reason. So we are continuing to stand by um, for confirmation that we've exited that approach ellipsoid about four minutes from now. Um, but I did just want to um, finish up on the numbers here because it's <laughs> it's really uh, it's pretty <laughs> staggering when you think about it. Uh, so the crew has orbited the Earth uh, 2,720 times during their 170 days on orbit. The International Space Station is traveling 17,500 miles per hour, which means that the crew orbits the Earth every 90 minutes and sees a sunset and a sunrise every 45 minutes. So that equates to over 72 million miles traveled in the last six-ish months wow. that they've been on board. That's pretty wild. Once again, that's a live view from the International Space Station looking at Crew Dragon Freedom with our four Crew 4 astronauts on board. Uh, they have gotten out of their seats. They are doffing or taking off their suits uh, and they're able to basically hang out uh, for a couple hours before they have to um, you know, put their suits back on for the um, re-entry phase of their return home. Now this view, uh, because the sun is shining on it and Dragon is getting further and further away from the station, it's hard to make out the specific features, uh, but the nose cone at this point is still open. Um, that won't close until a little bit later on when we are closer to uh, the re-entry portion. Um, the trunk is also still attached. That is a portion that we will jettison from the capsule in order to expose the heat shield, uh, which will be utilized, that heat shield will be utilized for that atmospheric re-entry. We're about three minutes away from the point at which we will exit the approach ellipsoid, but continuing to hear good call outs that everything is proceeding as expected today. We are targeting a splashdown off the coast of Jacksonville later this afternoon. That splashdown is targeted for 1.55 p.m. Pacific time. And we also did hear that the boat is already out there in place in preparation for Crew 4 to splash down. The boat that's being utilized today is Megan <laughs> after uh, Crew 2 astronaut Megan MacArthur. Just as a reminder for those uh, tuning in recently, uh, the Dragon Freedom spacecraft has separated from the International Space Station. Uh, in total, it will be uh, completing four departure burns, uh, basically all designed to increase the distance between the spacecraft and the space station. Um, and, and then once that is complete, as Sandra just mentioned, um, we'll begin that re-entry portion. In total, the astronauts will have about five and a half hours between undocking and splashdown. So relatively speaking, a pretty short journey uh, back to Earth. Dragon is now 860 meters away from Space Station, and you can see um, in this view here from the International Space Station that Dragon is continuing to get smaller and smaller as it backs away from the Space Station, um, expecting the call out that we've exited the approach ellipsoid in about a minute from now. So we are waiting for that call out that Dragon is outside of the approach ellipsoid. And everything has been 
moving along pretty smoothly so far today. Um, we are just waiting for that call out here any moment from now that the crew has exited the approach ellipsoid. They are about 980 meters away from the space station. As we mentioned earlier, everything is carefully choreographed, both approaching and departing the space station. Uh, fortunately for us, because it has been a long couple of, uh, a long few days, I should say, the departure phase is a lot faster moving uh, than the approach. Um, so we are able to, uh, basically the crew, as I mentioned before, will only have about five and a half hours between uh, uh, the undocking and the splashdown of their spacecraft. Um, and all in all, that's a pretty short journey. Um, of course, we are at the mercy of orbital mechanics, so um, it all depends on where the station is and where we are targeting a splashdown um, and basically the time that it takes to get from that point to the splashdown point. Um, of course, it's, uh, I would imagine the astronauts might prefer a shorter trip home because, again, they get to see their, their family sooner. Um, but it all kind of depends. So for those that have tuned in for our departure and splashdown uh, webcasts previously, sometimes they're a little longer, but this one is only about five and a half hours in total for this journey. And we are hearing confirmation that crew Freedom. 4 has SpaceX exited the approach ellipsoid. That Dragon was the next major milestone that we are looking towards. It is on a 24-hour safe free drift trajectory. There on your screen is SpaceX core Jake Vendel. And Freedom SpaceX repeating my last. Dragon has exited the approach ellipsoid and is on a 24 hour safe free drift trajectory. And SpaceX Freedom copies out of the uh, approach ellipsoid and 24 hour free, hour, uh, free drift. Thanks. Good words. And Dragon Freedom has now exited the approach ellipsoid, or AE, which is another imaginary shape, this time a three-dimensional ellipsoid that measures four kilometers by two kilometers by two kilometers in the same family as the keep out sphere. One of the key differences with the AE is that vehicles outside it have to be and on what we call So again, one of those key differences. And Freedom, SpaceX, one more note, we are gonna take down the big loop shortly. So again, Dragon has now exited the approach ellipsoid and as I was saying, one of those key differences with the approach ellipsoid is that vehicles outside it have to be on what we call a 24 hour safe free drift trajectory. Uh, HL, uh, just one more follow on. We are deactivating the big loop imminently. Okay, copy, deactivating the big loop. Thanks. And so you did hear those words back and forth from the ground here in Hawthorne to the crew on Freedom, namely the commander, Chell Lindgren, just letting them know that the big loop is going to be deactivated. And that happens because once we cross out of the approach ellipsoid, we're no longer in integrated operations with um, NASA and SpaceX. So now that we're out of the approach ellipsoid, um, they were just letting the crew know that that was the case. So again, we have exited the approach ellipsoid. So this means the spacecraft um, would not cross into the um, approach ellipsoid for at least 24 hours. If it lost all maneuvering because it is in that 24-hour safe free drift trajectory. 
And now that NASA astronauts Chell Lindgren, Bob Hines, and Jessica Watkins, as well as European Space Agency astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti, have departed the International Space Station, it will take them about five and a half hours until they make their way back to Earth. Next up, the crew will doff, or excuse me, they already have doffed or taken off their spacesuits uh, to settle in for their flight home. Uh, and today, targeted uh, Dragon is targeting a splashdown off of the coast. You see our recovery vessel there. Um, it'll be splashing down off the coast of Florida at 1.55 p.m. Pacific, uh, followed by the crew getting picked up at sea by one of that by that recovery vessel that you just saw. Um, and as they rest up, our teams here in Hawthorne will continue to keep an eye on the weather to ensure a safe return to Earth for Dragon and our four Crew 4 astronauts. And though our coverage here in Hawthorne is concluding for now, we'll turn it over to the NASA team in Houston to take us through the next phases of the Crew 4 mission. NASA TV will stay on the air for continuous live coverage along Crew 4's journey home. And for those of you watching online on NASA's YouTube, take a look at the description below the video. There you'll be able to find the new link for the Crew 4 coast phase. Live coverage will continue at that new location here shortly. And if you're watching Watching on NASA TV, you won't notice a change whatsoever as coverage will continue. Meanwhile, SpaceX's YouTube channel will join live coverage starting roughly one hour prior to splashdown. And as always, you can find mission updates on Twitter at, at NASA, at SpaceX, and on the web at NASA.gov. Thanks for watching this morning, and we'll see you soon for splashdown.